okay let's have a look uh, following a what must have been a hard landing uh, last week I think I've broken the lower spine quite badly uh, we can't see what's happening until we remove some of the covering it's a shame that the red line has to come off but uh, no point in that one staying there so get rid of that I'm gonna have to remove well at least from there down we'll see what's going on I might be able to join the cover in here to preserve the registration letter we'll have to see let's cut it about there I'm going in over the top down the other side if you remember when I repaired the wing of this um, somebody had been in there before me and made some I'll politely call them repairs and it looks like that same person has been in here because there's a very similar repair it goes all the way down I can see it now a piece of stainless steel bar okay what do we got Right, I think it's broken here because there's a join in the uh, spruce long runs down the side. So there's a join there, a join here, and it's party company here. And it's another, possibly a join, possibly a join, yeah. From there back, it goes into a different piece of wood. So it's broken on the join. But this is a previous repair, definitely under here. So I don't know what that was all about. Not very good repair. So, I mean, this is why you don't butt join pieces of wood. If you can see that, it's come in a little bit. If you butt join a piece of wood, where's the strength in that? There isn't any strength. So... I can't do anything about scarfing the joint, but what I can do is to glue a piece of ply on the top of this and on the bottom. And same with this side. The top spar, the spine if you like, seems to be unaffected by it all. The spar there is completely broken, this triangular one. <laughs> Incredibly soft balswood that wasn't going to do a lot, was it? No wonder it's broken. There's a knot just here where it's broken, so that was predictable, I guess. Um, yeah. This stainless steel bar I'm going to retain because it's built into the uh, covering and everything. But I'm going to re-glue it. And to do so, I've got to clear out the glue that's under it. Huh. Not that there's any glue under it to speak of. got to put something under there I'll epoxy that put something under this joint that's let's have a look oh someone's beat me to it actually there's a piece of one millimeter ply under there not doing any use to speak of I'm gonna have to repair the registration number not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's a horrible bit of glide, dry glue in there. Oh, it's gone. That one's gone too. Just goes to show really it's um it's nothing as bad as you think at the end of the day so I think um, won't take long to repair this. 
Okay, so I've got the first repairs in. I've got a piece of one sixteenth um, piece of one sixteenth ply. I'm going to put both sides, but for the minute I've got one side. I'm using epoxy. Same with the keel piece. Got a piece of one sixteenth ply. Then I'll go up the sides. I might be able to get a small piece on the sides of that. So I've got that other one waiting to be glued. I've got still got the spars to fix or cross what would you call them former diagonals. So I cut a couple of uh, replacement spars, just pre-glue them. I've used 3 16th, quite hard wood. Good to go. This will be the last piece to fit. As you can see, these are beefed up. I've got 1 16th ply top and bottom of these spruce spars, and I've just put a bit of 1 16th ply on the inside. So now if it's going to break, it's not going to be on these joints. The side, which I hadn't foreseen. Ease that down. Okay, the other one's quite a long piece. Go in there. Actually, it's got to go up under, isn't it? And slide. Actually, I think I could do a little bit more just in there. That's it. And slide across. Yep. Right. I'll give out a sand and then we'll break out the covering material and uh, get some covering on it because I want to fly on Sunday because the weather looks quite good. So um, it'll probably be the last one of the season. So I want to make it good and don't we? Pretty good. I've sanded the plywood braces uh, and I'm just good to stick on some fabric. I've just got to pull it in tight on there, like that. I'm wondering if I can put the G back on that I carefully took off. It does look a little bit dishevelled, but <laughs> the glue may reactivate. You never know. Um, it went there like that. Yeah, that's pretty much where it was. So we'll tighten it out in a minute. Super. And there it is. That's how you repair a balsa wood fuselage. And the moral of the story is, of course, don't join your longer ones, butt joins, because that's where they broke, all around the butt joins. So they're really beefed up now. So if that should happen again, I think I should be able to show you um, the actual landing that caused it. As you'll see, it wasn't a particularly heavy landing. Um, but it must have just hit badly and that was enough so easy repair but couldn't fly on like that but the only giveaway was the little split actually in the cover in both sides so I knew what happened it just flexed and just split the fabric uh, so always pays to check your airframe anyway I hope you do before you fly and but that could have been disastrous if I'd gone up on the toe there's a good chance the tail would have just come off so not particularly good so um, 
check your plane as we do pre-flight checks. And I'll see you in the next video, whatever that may be. Cheers guys, thanks for watching. Hit the little like button down below and leave some comments if you want to comment. Cheers. Bye.